on the borders of Holland and the threshold of Germany, this was our little town of Arnhem, on which the thunderbolt of war was destined to fall. In Arnhem now, the sound and the fury is stilled. The Nader Rhine flows peacefully, no longer tinged with the blood that was shed to hold the Arnhem Bridge. The bridge. This is all that remains of the bridge they fought so desperately to hold. Those brave men of the sky who came lightly equipped, as airborne troops must, to fight for 48 hours, and then fought day after day against the tanks and heavy weapons of the Huns. To us Dutch patriots, the St. Elizabeth's Hospital became a monument to the devotion of our doctors and nurses who fought a different battle, a battle for human lives. The village church at Osterbeek, where once our families spent peaceful Sunday mornings. Here the British boys fought a hand-to-hand -hand battle over the litter of hymn books and debris. Every little street had a part in that gallant bid for freedom the gay Tafelberg Hotel. It changed its role and became the chief dressing station. The Hartestein Hotel, here was divisional headquarters. Here the last stands were made. And now, as time does its best to cover the scars of war, the people of the soil make ready for a new harvest, and the sons of British homes lie at rest that a free world may live. In September 1944, to British airborne troops, Arnhem was just a name on a map, a town with a bridge 60 miles behind the enemy lines. On airfields in Britain, men were being briefed for their part in the greatest airborne operation in history. The Allied Airborne Army of two American and one British Airborne Division, under command of Lieutenant General Boy Browning, was to make a surprise landing behind the enemy lines capture the bridges over the Maas, the Waal and the Lower Rhine and hold open the gateway to the plains of northern Germany. The 1st British Airborne Division would land north of the Lower Rhine to seize the bridge at Arnhem, the northernmost key point of Field Marshal Montgomery's daring plan. To the south, American airborne troops would seize the bridges over the Waal at Nijmegen and the Maas at Graal. Up the narrow corridor thus created by the airborne troops, British Second Army planned a swift drive to cross the Rhine at Arnhem in two days and turn east into Germany. Pay attention and try and keep awake. Now this is our dropping zone for tomorrow. It's six miles out of the town, so we'll have to go as fast as we can for the bridge. Now, there's a railway bridge here, a pontoon bridge here, and this is the big one here. That's our objective. Second battalion take that. While the first battalion come in from the north, down this main road, and join up with this here. And the third battalion fill in here on the west side. Like that, we form a ring around the bridge. So you get the idea. Our brigade forms the bridgehead for the river day and night. The next day, the second lift gets in and makes the bridgehead bigger so the second army tanks can get a clean run through when they arrive. When do you think that will be, sir? Tuesday, the second day after we dropped. Well, we've gone over the plan often enough now, and if you don't know it now, you never will. Any questions? No, sir. Nephew, on daily? Just about now, sir. Well, you all know enough about not talking too much. See the hut is locked up, son, Bateman? Right, sir. I fall out. Come on, you two. Get an early cup. You'll need it. Looks like I'm in the this time. How many times have we had a council now? Sixteen, isn't it? Maybe seventeen now. Hey, Tom, you know that Queenie? I'm sure she's a spy. You know, the one that looks like a carrier pigeon. Halt! Look out! 
Tick down a blackout when I switch the light out. Paratroopers aren't supermen. These, for all the deeds they were to accomplish, are just ordinary people. Sergeant Jack Bateman of County Down Island. He was a peacetime soldier. Sergeant John Daly of Waterford Island. Also a peacetime soldier, he came from a farm. Private Peter Holt of Middlesex, machinist. Private Tommy Scullion of Ballymena County Antrim, pay clerk. Private David Parker of Irvin, Scotland, farm worker. Private Luca from Dorsetshire, electrician. Private Titch Preston of Grimsby, wagon driver. Corporal Pierce from Wales. He used to keep a fish and chip shop before the war. Private Van Rysel from Staffordshire. He was a pattern maker in the potteries. Private Reginald Spray of London, electrical engineer. Just ordinary men. British Airborne Division, under the command of Major General Urquhart, is composed of the 1st and 4th Parachute Brigades and the 1st Air Landing Brigade, with the 1st Polish Parachute Brigade attached. This force of more than 12,000 men will fly from Britain in 1,100 aircraft and 700 gliders. They will fly in three lifts, crossing and landing in enemy-held territory in broad daylight, protected by fighters and light bombers of the tactical air force. The Air Landing Brigade are to take off in the first lift. More than 350 gliders loaded with guns, jeeps, ammunition, rations, stores, and over 3,000 troops. Now, with their tugs, Stirlings, Albemarle's, Halifaxes, Dakotas, flown by RAF Transport Command, they take off from airfields all over southern England. They kill Farm, Down Ampley, Broadway, Manston, Harwell, Burford, Keyville, and Tarrant, Russia. Dakotas of the American 9th Troop Carrier Command, manned by American pilots and air crews, are to carry over 2,000 men of the 1st Parachute Brigade. Did you bring the Sunday papers to the Yes, all of them. Going that Gubbins this week, son. Isn't there? 
But I hope it isn't cancelled this time. Well, if it is, I'll be asking for my card, believe me. As the unending stream of gliders flies east over England, heading for the Thames estuary, the people of Britain are on their way to church. It is Sunday, September the 17th, 1944, Thanksgiving Day for the Battle of Britain. Four years ago, that battle was won. Now, thanks to the few, the many set out to carry the fight to the enemy. A hundred miles across the North Sea, then the Dutch coast south of the Hook. From now on, it's enemy-occupied territory. Desolate, sodden fields, flooded by the Germans to halt our advancing armies. The cruelest blow to an already starving Holland. Medium bombers are returning from their share in the operation, softening up the German flak defences, while RAF fighters patrol the skies around the first lift. Opposition to the glider landing is slight at first, and the few Germans in the area are quickly mopped up. The task of the air landing brigade is to secure the landing areas and so protect the arrival of the parachute brigade and the two lifts to follow. Close behind the gliders come the Dakotas with the parachute troops, half a minute late. Their American crews fly in tight formation as they approach the dropping zone at 500 feet.
The task of the first parachute brigade is to join up with their jeeps and anti-tank guns, already unloaded from the gliders, and make those seven miles to Arnhem, seize and hold the bridge. Right, are we all pleasant? Number one section, number two section, yes, sir. number three. One mess in private hold, sir. Right, the time is now 14.40. They're ready to move the bridge immediately. Order of march, number one section leading, followed by two, followed by headquarters, followed by three. Right, any questions? No, no, sir. Right, move. Follow me, runner. Private hold, second battalion, sir. Okay, jump on. We're going under the bridge. Right out, Webb. The news of the landings spreads like wildfire through the villages. In every street, as the airborne men pass on their way to the bridge, friendly Dutch civilians come out to greet these long-awaited friends. Members of the underground resistance movement, men who have planned for this day during four long years of Nazi domination, hasten to put themselves at the disposal of their allies. Jeeps of the divisional recce squadron racing for the bridge are badly shot up. Take a look at the blokes, Holt. I'm afraid they've had it, sir. Hell. OK, take cover in that house over there. I'll cover your cross. <laughs> Yes, sir. We were pretty lucky not to get hit. We better stick around here until the other wrecky jeeps come up. Take a look through the house, though. Right, sir. I'd like to get in touch with my platoon as soon as possible, sir. We'd better push on to the main bridge. Take a look out of the window and see if they've parked those jeeps all right. Ian, where do you make us now? I think we're about here, sir. Hey! Yes, they're OK. What's the form now? Well, I reckon we're about here, roughly hey! 500 yards west of the bridge. The 1st and 3rd battalions should be into the town by now, on the roads to the north of us. 
Brigadiers with them. Why? Hanbury's about here, just short of the ramp, going for the north end of the bridge. Hello, George One. Hello, George One. I'm going to attack now. I'm going into the attack now. We'll report at south end of the bridge. Out. George 1, heavy fire from pillbox and armor south of river. Cannot get on, cannot get on. Heavy casualties. Hello, George 1, Sunray Miner here. Am sending flamethrower to deal with pillbox. Okay, turn it on. Okay, let him on. Yes, this will do as Brigade Headquarters Staff Sergeant. Get the signal sergeant and get him to sight his steps. Yes, sir. Is that okay? Right, get cracking. They must be firing those spandos from the other end of the bridge. I'll get the guns on them. Dennis? Yeah? You got a map? Yes. Will that do as observation for you? Well, it isn't first class, but it'll do. Oh, good. Well, look, if you show me the map, I'll put you in the picture. Second day, Monday, September the 18th. Fierce fighting is still going on in the outskirts of Arnhem as the parachute battalions press on against rapidly increasing German resistance to reinforce the remnants of the one battalion and their brigade headquarters staff that reached the bridge last night. The first prisoners are a mixed bag. Insolent SS men from crack units, dazed infantry from local defense companies, a few bewildered cooks, clerks, and transport drivers. It is clear from their interrogation that it's going to be a tough fight for the bridge at Arnhem. The prisoners are brought into headquarters at the Hartestein Hotel in the little suburb of Oosterbeck, on the main road about three miles west of the Arnhem Bridge. The Germans are now fighting desperately to isolate the scattered airborne troops. Northwest of Hartestein, they are attempting to wipe out the air landing brigade on the dropping zones. Between Oosterbeck and Arnhem, the enemy have thrown a cordon of tanks and infantry to prevent any further reinforcement of the airborne troops at the bridge. At the bridge itself, the bloodiest action is being fought out. The British force of less than 600 men is now contained within a small area, barely 300 yards wide, astride the northern ramp. Ceaseless German attacks are launched with incessant shelling and mortaring from point-blank range. But the men of the bridge stand firm. No, Henry couldn't make the south end of the bridge. He had too many casualties and he ran into tanks. Our orders now are we've got to hold the north end until we're relieved. Did you get any gen on the set? Yes, terrific. The armies at Grab and going flat out for Nijmegen. Good. There must be another half tracks. Let's go and look. All right, Tony, you can go and have a wash now. Okay. What do you make the score now, Gans? It looks like eight half tracks and a few odd vehicles. Not a bad morning's work, Gotha. When second lift arrives, we'll really get cracking. Half a day late, or it has been delayed by bad weather at home, the second lift is coming in. The fourth parachute brigade with more divisional troops. There is fighting round the dropping zones now, and some of the parachute troops have to shoot their way to the rendezvous. But they keep to the original plan, to make for the north side of Arnhem.
on the landing zones, gunners, engineers, Rini, ordnance, RASC and medical personnel unload their gliders under spasmodic mortar and machine gun fire. Hello, Jimmy. What's happening? Well, I've just been talking to a recce officer. The second have got the bridge all right. They're having a terrible time. What about the first and third? They're trying to get through, and we're moving in with the eleventh at first light. OK. Right. My name's Maxted. Stanley Maxted. I'm a Canadian recording dispatches for the BBC. I'm speaking now from divisional headquarters. It's Monday evening. There's been bitter fighting down at the bridge, in the town, and within this completely surrounded perimeter. Our men have dug their slip trenches in the beech treed grounds of the Hartstein Hotel on the Arnhem Road, about three miles west of the bridge. We have an added worry tonight because General Urquhart hasn't been heard from since he left the landing zone to go toward Arnhem on Sunday. And that's all BBC for now. Third day. Tuesday, September the 19th. At first light, units of the second lift are starting to fight their way in towards Arnhem. Sergeant! Can we have a shot in with the beer, sir? Okay, off you go. Some of the badly needed anti-tank guns flown in with the second lift are ambushed by mortars and machine guns and shot up before they can be brought into action. But the gun detachments throw themselves into the fight as infantry to reinforce the hard-pressed defenders at the bridge. Through the woods and streets, they're fighting their way with desperate courage. More than three quarters of the relieving force are killed or wounded.
the St. Elizabeth Hospital, less than two miles from the bridge, savage battles continue throughout the day. In the hospital, casualties are mounting, not only among the airborne men, but among Dutch patriots as well. A two-way traffic of stretcher bearers, nurses and wounded passes and repasses endlessly on the main staircase. Fourth day, Wednesday, September the 20th. This morning, the defending lines are so thin that German tanks are able to cross the bridge and fire into brigade headquarters. Hello, dog, easy, fox. Hello, dog, easy, fox. Here's got that tank. That's the second one this morning. Good. Good morning, Bill. Morning, Freddy. I've interrogated those German prisoners. The information's a bit serious. Seems we're up against a Marine Brigade and two SS Panzer Divisions. That makes 200 tanks at a rough guess and explains why Division can't get through to us. What are our casualties so far? Well, as a matter of fact, I make it about 50% of our original strength, including about two to 300 killed. Any wireless communication yet? No, only Dennis is set to the gunners. Nothing from Second Army either? No. Not too good. Thank you, Bill. Signal up. Sir, get that pigeon ready. What? To eat? No. Tony, we've got to let them know at base about this armour. Hello, dog, easy, fox. Wait. We're through, sir. General Urquhart's on the set. Hello, dog, easy, fox. Sunray on set. Dog, easy, fox, over. Dog, easy, fox. Sunray here. What is the form with you? All attempts to reach you from this side have failed, and we cannot do anything more about it. The people to your south are doing everything they can to get to you tonight. Just hang on until tomorrow morning. Tell the chaps that they are doing magnificent. Dog Easy Fox, over. Hello, Dog Easy Fox. Wilco, we can hang on. The troops' morale is very high. Dog Easy Fox, out. Dennis, come over here, will you? Oh, give me a cigarette, Tony. This pipe's gone out. Look, this is the situation. Division can't get through. Second Army are going to have a damn good try. But if they don't get through tonight, well, things are going to be pretty grim. Hello, runner. Come on. Sir, message from Mr. Hanbury. Jerry has driven us out of the arches. Put charges on the bridge. We're going to put him out at 1500 hours. We have about 20 men left, so some of them casualties. Okay, good luck to you, runner. What is it? A word in your ear, Johnny. Well, the house has had it. Is it on fire? Well and truly. Is there anywhere we can move the wounded? Not a hope. We're completely surrounded. Well, I've spoken to the doctors. We can't possibly allow over 200 wounded to be burnt to death. Most of the fighting men are out of the house now, aren't they? Yes, we're on both sides now. Well, get the rest of those who can fight out. 
And I'll get the doctors to take the wounded out of the front door, under the cover of the Red Cross flag. And then you'll just have to carry on and fight it out. OK, Johnny. I'm afraid it means goodbye till after the war. Well, goodbye, Freddy. Good luck. We've done much more than anyone could possibly have expected us to do. After all, the division was only supposed to hold the bridge for two days. We ourselves have held it twice as long. Fifth day. Thursday, September the 21st. In the grounds of divisional headquarters at the Hartestein Hotel, our men are digging in. Up at the house, plans are being made to meet the changing situation. We've just moved out of this wooded area here and moved into these houses on the Oosterbeek Road, this side of the river. I see. Any news of the Second Army yet? Yes, they're captured by Megan Bridge in tank just... Uh... Oh, good. Hello, Hill. Conference over. What's it for? They've just broken up. Now, I'm afraid that nothing more can be done from this side to help the 1st Brigade at the bridge. The plan now is to pull back from Arnhem and form a tight perimeter here, round the Hartestein. The Germans have succeeded in blocking us on three sides, but we must fight to keep a foothold north of the Rhine so that 2nd Army can cross when they arrive. What about the Poles? Oh, yes. We must get them across the river as quickly as possible after they drop this afternoon to help thicken up the perimeter. Any reply from the bridge yet? No, sir. They're not answering. Bitte, bitte. Can you tell us to where we have to report? Who are you? I'm from the 2nd Battalion, sir. And you? I'm from the 1st Battalion, sir. The collecting post is down there. Will you report to the Sergeant Major? Right, sir. Uh, is there any news from the bridge, sir? No, afraid not. Right, thank you, sir. Hello, Van Helder. What is the news from the underground? I'm afraid it's all over at the bridge. The Germans are concentrating armour in the centre of the town, and they're coming this way. Uh, us to have been told to report to you, sir, Major. What mob are you in? I'm from the 2nd Battalion, this chap's in the 1st. There's one of your chaps over there. Get yourselves dug in. Right, sir. OK. Hiya, Tom. Oh, hello, Pete. What are you doing here? Well, I got lost in the blood in the dark. What happened to you? Oh, I got tangled up in a tree. Well, come on, jump in and grab a shovel. That's tanks, isn't it? Yeah, they're tanks, all right. They're not ours. the force of the bridge being wiped out, the Germans are now able to concentrate all their force against the Hartestein perimeter. 
Working in twos and threes, enemy tanks push through the woods, probing to find a weak spot in our defenses. In the streets, too, German tanks are busy nosing their way between the devastated houses. A few remaining anti-tank guns fight them off at point-blank range. message for you from the German commander. He has agreed to the evacuation of the wounded in the morning, but insists that you leave your present position in these houses. He says that if you refuse, he will bring up his tanks and blast you up. Oh, does he? Well, tell him from me, if he brings up one tank within range of my anti-tank guns, I'll blow it out of the ground. I know I've got no guns, but at least I've got a pill. Chuck that cookie, Dixon, and go and have a shot at one of those tanks. How are things at the hospital? Oh, we're managing all right, but we're very much overworked. Sir. Good man. There's no future for me in cooking now, sir. Tommy, everything all right? Yep, look who's turned up. Hello, Sam Bateman. Where have you been? Home for a weekend. I got picked up by a wrecky jeep. I think I've been with every unit in the div except our own, trying to get through the bridge. What's happened to the platoon, anyway? I don't know. Lost them one dark night. Have you any face, son? You're lucky. Don't smoke it until the morning, bud. This evening, we hold no bridgehead on the north bank of the Rhine. Here in the shrinking perimeter, the Germans are plastering us unmercifully with mortars and 88s, and they've taken the ferry, so the poles who drop below the river aren't across to us yet. The medium guns of the second army from over 10 miles range are firing on targets around us tonight. Inside the Tafelberg Hotel, used as the chief dressing station, every room is crammed with wounded. Airborne and Dutch doctors and nurses labor day and night to care for the endless stream of casualties. Is there any morphia, nurse? Doctor, mag ik nog een spuitje geven? The airborne Roman Catholic padre has died of wounds, and Father Dyker, a Dutch priest, is carrying on his work. Are they still operating? No, sir. The theater ceiling's just fallen in. Nobody hurt. Any fracture? I don't think so. Good. That's a gun to the second army. That's a gun to the second army. Aye, they sound a bit nearer. They've been going at it all afternoon. Aye, but they're not here yet. Sixth day. Friday, September the 22nd. 
Although it has become a fight for survival now, never for one moment does any man doubt that the Second Army will get up to us. With an enemy who seems to grow stronger hour by hour, attacking from all sides, with our ammunition short, with little food and without rest, the airborne men regroup and fight on. of four battalions rally at Osterbake Church under Lieutenant Colonel Lonsdale. Well, now, the form is I have withdrawn you from the open ground by the river. I want you to rest here for two hours, in which time get a meal from what you have left. Get yourselves clean and be prepared to move out to a new position around the houses on the south side of the perimeter. On this position, we must stand or fall and fight to the last round. This edge of the perimeter is being held by a mixed bag consisting of the 1st Battalion, the 3rd Battalion, the 11th Battalion, and the South Staffordshire Regiment. This force will be known as Lonsdale Force. My headquarters will be in the church here. The news of the Second Army is that their armored reconnaissance patrols have reached the far side of the river. The Polish parachute brigade has landed on the far side of the river. So far, we have had a good battle against good troops troops that are not up to our standard. We have fought them in North Africa, in Sicily, and Italy, and at times against overwhelming odds. They were not good enough for us then, and they are not good enough for us now. Get yourselves damn well dug in and shoot to kill. I'm going off in a reconnaissance now, and good luck to you all. Clean up the vets, Keith? Yep. Managed to scrounge a cigarette from the major. What's the news? Well, there isn't any much. What's that? Major Smith's again? Not on your life. It's the, they're Sterlings. Uh, a moment ago, we heard the engines of heavy aircraft, and now flying low to drop their supplies. I can see over the tops of the trees Sterlings, Halifaxes, Dakotas, and now parachutes are blossoming out like bunches of chrysanthemums. What they dropped to us yesterday mostly went to the enemy, but. It wasn't the RAF's fault, bless them. And now they seem, as they leave the aircraft, to be dropping much nearer to us. Some, a few, are even dropping in the ground. All those beautiful qualities. just pouring incendiary up at those aircraft up there. The sky sizzling and sparkling like sparklers at a firework display. But they just fly right on into it, straight and level. Oh, what an air force. And now there's a Dakota on fire. Another plane hit, his wings burning, his fuselage is on fire. He's, there go the crew, three, four, it, it must be the pilot that's staying in. She's nosing 
downward now. It, it is the pilot that's staying in. He's sending that plane right down the tracer screen. He's, he's going to crash that, that aircraft right onto the German guns that are firing at him now. There are, I can count, three, four, five other planes burning. And still those men fly right on, steady as battleships right in here. Those containers are dropping much closer than they did yesterday, but now I can see that they're still dropping beyond the line of trees. The RAF uh, are dropping them in the right place. It isn't their fault, but we're not there. We've been pushed in from there. What a shame, though, after the show that those flyers have, have put up. Such a wonderful show that we won't be able to reach more of those, those supplies. There's no more shouting and waving and laughing now. It's, it's a desperate disappointment for these men. They don't demand much. All they ask is, is something to hit back with. each other throughout the day. Every brick, every wall, every house is part of the battle that ebbs to and fro. But tired as they are, the spirit of these men remains aggressive. Hey, Tom. Come on, give. What? That grenade. Oh, it's my last one. Come on, give. their homes and escape to safety, Dutch civilians stay on inside the perimeter. Precious food and water is shared while Dutch housewives comfort our wounded in the cellars of their shattered houses. How are you feeling now? Oh, not too bad. Uh, you'd better go to the hospital tomorrow and get a clean dressing put on that. Okay. Ooh. I should not have had no slip changes tonight. Shovel and make us a bit deeper. Okay, off you go. Tommy, where have you been ahead? Get a stretcher, right? Stretcher coming up. There's a padre now, Tommy. He'll help him. Take it easy, old chap. We'll soon have you with the doctor. You'll be all right. No. No, Padre. I'm sure. Will you do something for me? Take a message to my mother.
Seventh day. Saturday, September the 23rd. Blast, I think it's my foot. Now, Sergeant, you're not going to take your boots off in my budwar, are you? What will the neighbours think? The perimeter defences hold firm in spite of continuous shelling and mortaring. The most murderous concentrated fire I've seen in two wars. But shortage of food, ammunition and sleep, coupled with incessant sniping, is beginning to tell. Wait, Charlie, there's that Jerry loudspeaker again. Bunch of pansies to have white handkerchiefs after a week of this. And you know what you can do with your own white handkerchief? <whistles> no surrender! And you can fall in! I repeat. Men of the British First Airborne Division, if you want to live to see your families again, surrender now. The alternative is total annihilation. You are completely surrounded. Come forward, waving white hands. Correspondents with the forces at Arnhem report that they are fighting on magnificently, although they are short of ammunition and water, and some have had no food for several days. War correspondent Alan Wood writes, If in the years to come any man says to you, I fought at Arnhem, take off your hat to him and buy him a drink, for his is the stuff of which England's greatness is made. No further news has come to hand. A very good idea, Alan. It's a very good idea, but it'll cost you money, Alan. I'll have a large Napoleon brandy. Eighth day. Sunday, September the 24th. Turn up. Yes, sir? Give the Major a shake. It's time he took over. Good morning, David. What's been happening? Chief of Staff returned from the conference with Second Army just after midnight. Anything good? Well, they tried hard to get through on both Thursday and Friday nights, but the roads between Nijmegen and Arnhem are pretty tough going for tanks that are under enemy fire the whole way. But they've got as far as Elst here. Second Army intends to make an assault tonight. The engineers are building a Class 40 bridge, and the Guards' Armoured Division are crossing into the perimeter. War diary, messages. Well, I hope to God they make it. Everybody's feeling a bit tired. I know. Jerry's ever take a day off. Can you get any dance music on that? I'm fed up with a racket upstairs. What do you think they're playing? What? You'll be far better off when you're dead. Blimey, even the BBC's getting a sense of humor these days. We hear today that our wounded are still taken to the dressing station at the Tattleberg, but it's in enemy hands now. Oh. Tell, tell. How's it? How's it? There's 
Peace will not build enough. Tea here. Crank it, Traeger. Must go outside. Oh, they got the poles across the river last night, sir. In the army yet? Not a sausage. They'll be along. Platz machen. Nee, nee, bei mir nichts. Watch out, he's coming on that chimney. Two days. Oh, it won't be long. We have given Doc Pete. What? Me sent that bloomin' hospital when Jerry took over? Not likely. I had a flesh wound anyway. As soon as that shell landed outside the hospital, that Jerry sentry duck, I beat it. Give us something to keep the fire going. September the 25th. David, what did the general say in that message to Second Army yesterday? He said that unless we're relieved today, we've had it. Here it is. All ranks are now completely exhausted as a result of eight days' continuous effort. Lack of food and water and deficiency in arms combined with high casualties has had its effect. All ranks will be ordered to break out rather than surrender. We have done our best and will continue to do so as long as possible. Good to try and record for you a picture of this place now. You wouldn't believe it. These men are really hard pressed, but do they know what quit? They do not. For eight days and 16 hours, they fought and waited for that hard battling Second Army. And if necessary, they'll go on fighting and waiting as long as there's breath left in their bodies. How much longer this can go on, I don't know, but. It won't be the airborne men who call a halt. And that is all from Arnhem on Monday, September the 25th at tea time. Only there isn't any tea. Okay. Stanley. from Div HQ. We've had orders from Monty down below. We're pulling out tonight. Pulling out? How in blazes do you pull out of a mess like this? I don't know. We just smash up the equipment, take what we can and pull out. It seems that the second army attack last night didn't come off. Stand, I'm off, sir. 
Excuse me. Ryan Isella has died. What? Sergeant? It's all over and we're pulling out tonight. The seriously wounded will be left behind. The parties are staying and so are the doctors. Hello, Love King Nan. Love King Nan. Report my signals. Over. Will Mr. Stevens make it? Hello, Love King Nan. Love King Nan. Report my signals. Take him down Over. to Sella, then, will you? That's the fourth bloke that's had it, trying to get that well today. Water, water. That's the last box of ammo, Sarge. I'm sorry to be so much trouble, John. Oi, Nobby! Water! Limey, Moses couldn't have done better. Well, boys, we're pulling out. We've got to hold on here until 11 o'clock tonight, and then we're going back across the river. The route down to the river will be marked with white tapes, and there will be guides out as well. All you have to do is hang on to the bloke in front of you. One thing more, get some sacking, discloths, or what have you, and get these number nines wrapped up. We've got to be dead quiet this trip. At each cross path or turning, a ghost-like glider pilot, one of that hard-fighting regiment of sergeants, steps out and takes the whispered password, John Bull, and the silent figures move on. Not all of those troops reached the river. Murderous crossfire from Spandau's caught more than one party. Kindly Dutch folk watch us making our way down through the woods. They realize the hated enemy is again on their doorsteps. But their devotion to those left behind never wavered for a moment. My friends, all I can do for you is to read a few lines of a song. I just read them to my own children. Shall I? that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee, for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. We lie motionless, some for hours, until the time comes to scramble over the dikes and into the boats while the second army guns thunder their anger on the enemy positions. It's a pretty shame after all the good food of God to finish up like this. Well, we've held onto this bridgehead for nine days. What's up the second army, sir? It's obvious to me they can't get through on the Arnhem near Megan Road. And owing to the dikes and ditches on both sides of the road, they can't deploy. 
They've come all the way from the Albert Canal, and I should think they're finding it a hell of a job to hang on to those bridges at Grave and the Omega. Hold it up front! ourselves into a boat. Just now I heard a voice that was sheer music saying, you better step lively boys, tain't healthy around here. It was a Canadian voice and these are Canadian engineers who are manning the assault craft who hauled them overland under enemy fire through a narrow German flanked corridor over fields and dikes to come and get us out of hell across this swift flowing river. daylight caught them, nearly 2,000 are across out of the 10,000 dropped just nine days ago. 
As we feel the muddy ground under our feet again comes the impact of the thought of those we're leaving behind across the river. 8,000 of them, killed, wounded, and missing. And that's how they came from Elst toward Nijmegen. They had fought a good fight and kept the faith with you at home. They stood against the enemy's armor, and none had weakened. These knights of Arnhem had no armor. Their strength was in their own courage and in each other. By dying in that ravished Dutch town, they have saved countless thousands of other lives. They've written in letters of fire an immortal page of history. Their manner of passing shall be carried like a banner borne high by all who shall come after. Their story will be told wherever men cherish deeds of good report. The story of those filthy, grimy, wonderful gentlemen who drop from the clouds and fight where they stand. <laughs>